hotels in Ontario. We're on a stay-at-home order. We're not even supposed to leave our houses. We're supposed to cower in fear in our homes until at least June 16th. And it's been like that since November. That's how they want you to live. They want you to live in complete and total fear and submission so they can do anything they want to you. And what they want to do to you is very sinister. They want to take away your rights and freedoms, which we've seen, and they want to nullify them for good by encoding the vaccine passport. If they get the compliance of 75%, that's the number they keep telling you. Once we get 75% of you vaccinated, we'll open. We open, we promise. That's their magic number. Whether they achieve it or not, and I guarantee you they won't, because I don't think there's 75% of the country stupid enough to take that vaccine. They will say they did. And then they're gonna release polls on CBC and Global and CTV that say 80% of the population wants the vaccine passport. Then Justin Trudeau and his perpetual admiration for China's dictatorship, well, he'll just declare the vaccine passport law. And all of a sudden, our rights and freedoms that millions of people fought and died for, those rights and freedoms that our government preaches to the world is why everybody wants to come to Canada, are gone for good and are now relegated to the government-granted privileges predicated on you taking an untested, experimental, and forced inoculation. That is not Canada. That is not a country we want to live in. And that's only half the problem. That's only half the problem. Once they've nullified your rights and your ability to speak out and your ability to just say no, then they can do other really bad things to you. They have, they have the CERB. Everybody loves the CERB. Oh, it's here to help us. No, the CERB is and always was a precursor to universal basic income. The hallmark of every communist dictatorship ever in the history of mankind. They want to put so many of you out of work. They want to close so many of our businesses. They want to cause so much economic destruction that they can masquerade as the saviors and say, oh my gosh, tens of millions of Canadians are out of work. We need to help them. We need to have universal basic income for all. And what does that mean? That means they're going to just borrow a ton of more money, raise the taxes on everybody else, our cost of living goes through the roof, our standard of living drops, and all those people that used to own businesses and used to work for those businesses, which represent 70% of all our jobs in Canada and 97% of all our businesses in Canada, all of a sudden they're no longer independent members of society that can just say no. They're no longer served by their government. Now they depend on their government to survive every month and the government no longer serves them, the government rules them. And now you have the combination of the government ruling you financially and dominating you through the nullification of your rights. What happens next? We all know, they're calling it the Great Reset. And nobody wants to hear about this because it sounds really scary. And that's because it is. They tell you by 2030, you will own nothing and you will be happy. <laughs> <laughs> what a surprise! So they want to create a system where you have no rights, no freedoms, no personal wealth, and the government owns everything, but don't worry, they love you so much, they're going to take even better care of you and your children than you ever could, you know, because the government's great at running everything. What do they want to do to you? It's right there written in black and white. There was a policy drafted. And it's made by a supposed non-government agency, but then it was approved and funded by our government, and it was posted right on the government website. And it's exactly what they say in the Great Reset. And the Great Reset is the name of the, of the World Economic Forum this year. It's not some conspiracy theory. It's an actual event, and that's what it's called. And they outline how your life is gonna be in 2030. And I'll tell you, this is how they intend your life to be. If you're a single person, they expect you to live in 150 square feet. Wow. Depending on your status, you may or may not have your own bathroom, or you may share a communal bathroom within your building. You will live in a giant complex where you rarely need to leave your building. Most of you will work from home. You will shop for your groceries in your building. You'll get your hair cut in your building. You will get your clothing in your building. You will meet your friends within your building. You'll go to Starbucks within your building. 
you're basically going to be living within the confines of your building. If you're one of those wonderful people that was that was fortunate enough to be able to get a job where you didn't have to stay in your building, you're not going to go down to the underground parking and jump in your car. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're going to go outside, you're going to see the rack of e-bikes owned by the government. You'll walk over to the stand, you'll scan the barcode on your wrist, it'll bring up your digital identification and your digital wallet, and you'll see if you have enough credits in there to rent that bike for the 15 minutes you need to get it. You know, you wow. haven't got paid yet that week, so you're a little short on funds. And if you have it, you'll get to work, you'll go to work, and on the way back, you'll probably just have enough money to either take that bike home, or get some food and walk home. And that's the life they want for you. The life of choosing between a bike for transport to your job or walking home with food for dinner. A, job, a, a life where you cannot accumulate any type of wealth or pass anything on to your children. A life where you cannot question the dictates of the government. And a life where you're nothing more than a slave. Cog in a wheel that becomes nothing but a useless eater. That's what they call you guys. That's what they call the so-called 99%. They don't need you. They have machines that can do most of your work. They're just taking up space, taking up resources. They want to nullify you. They want to control you. This is where this is headed. That's what the book is all about. That's why they don't want you to read this book. And that's why it's so important. Not only do you read it, not only do you tell others about it, I want you to review it. I want you to post about it on social media. This book needs to spark a national conversation. Because when we have the masses talking and the mainstream media cannot ignore it and they have to address everything that I just told you today, the vast, vast majority of Canadians are not going to be on board. The people have now realized that all these restrictions, all this government propaganda has nothing to do with our health and safety and everything to do with shutting us down. And we are making a difference. I can prove it to you. When I was on my last tour, the Freedom Convoy tour, we started an initiative to open our businesses. It was part of United Non-Compliance Phase 2, Taking Action. We took protest groups like this, and we broke them off into the four main groups we needed, four action groups. The first one was small business owners. Oh, hello. So they could organize oh, okay. okay. on their own terms, on their I'm own just... timeline. The second was concerned parents who wanted to nullify the restrictions in school, especially the mask I just want to post it so people so know he's alive. <laughs> have that new rule where they can vaccinate your 12-year-old okay. without your consent and without your knowledge just by obtaining their consent. Mandatory vaccination by another method. Because everybody knows if your child is in school and their authority figures like their teachers and their principal tell them to take that vaccine, they're going to take that vaccine. Because even you have trained them to listen to their teachers. So that was the second group. The third group was employers that did not want to be forcibly vaccinated because once again, the government has just changed the law that allows your employer to fire you if you refuse the COVID vaccine. Because our government doesn't want to mandate the vaccine. They want everybody else to do it to you for them. Understand now? Finally, the last group was people who want to take off their masks and shop or live their life mask free or put it on if they want. The point is they want to have a choice. Those were the four groups. And the main group were the small businesses. And BC organized hard. I said this before that Alberta, when I was there, they were in the fighting spirit of Canada. And they, were, they were fired up. But BC impressed me. I saw their organizational skills. They created groups across all of the social media platforms. And by the time I got back to Vancouver on the 23rd of May, about a month had passed, and their opening date was set for May 24th, Patriots Day, all across Canada. And when I got to BC, I saw the list of businesses that had signed on. It had grown to over 2,000 businesses. Yeah! 2,000 businesses that all just say no. And guess what happened in BC the very next day? By coincidence. Restaurants were allowed dining, restrictions were lifted, businesses were allowed to open. And why? Because the government would much rather look like they granted permission than look like they lost control. Yeah. All it took was the people of BC to band together 
together and organize a group large enough where the government had to take them seriously. Just like this today, if there was a protest of six people and I was standing on this stage, I'm pretty sure they would have just rounded us all up and carted us off. But because we are numbers, they had to let this protest go on. I don't know if you saw what happened at the end of my freedom conference. Hey, no, he is a very eager freedom fighter. Well, the end of the Freedom Convoy culminated in Montreal on May 1st, and I told everybody that is going to be the place to be. I promoted it for over a month, and when I showed up there, I was greeted by about 300,000 Canadian citizens. Woo! Now, to put that in perspective, our armed forces are roughly 30 to 40,000, and our Canadian Canadian service members are around 50,000. So that's around 80,000 people working for the government scattered around the country. And we had over 300,000 Canadians of every single race, religion, ethnicity, gender, age, sexual orientation, law enforcement, government, military, civilian, even criminals in the crowd. And you know why? Because we're all Canadians and we all have rights. Yeah. in non-compliance and that's why this movement cannot fail because we are on the side of truth the light the truth and the light is the right and it always wins the only question is the price we are going to pay and the longer we do nothing the longer we wait another two weeks the longer we keep our businesses closed the longer we keep our children's masks the more bold they become the more restrictions they enact the more of your rights they violate, and the more laws they break. Now is the time to stand up. And the best way to stand up, everybody keeps asking me, how can I support the movement? What can I do? I'm only one person. They're so big, they're so strong. Buy the book! Read it! Give it to other people! When millions of people are armed with the knowledge that is in my head that I have been giving to you, they will no longer be able to keep the people in a constant state of fear. They will no longer be able to manipulate the people, and the people en masse will stand up for themselves and declare in one voice, this pandemic is over. <laughs> Freedom is never given, ladies and gentlemen. It's always taken. You can give up your rights, but they're never given back to you. Never. Never. You'll never see one time in history where somebody gave up their rights to a tyrannical government and didn't have to fight to get them back. And most of the people in this country don't even realize they're in a fight. They're in a fight getting attacked by an enemy who's beating them mentally, physically, spiritually, psychological and physical warfare. And the majority of the people are not only not fighting back, they're looking for the person who's beating the crap out of them, asking them what to do next. Of you. That's why they want you to be nice. And what's the other thing they want out of you? Tolerance. You're not a good citizen unless you're tolerant. Tolerance. Look it up. It literally means putting up with something you know is wrong. That's like you sitting there while somebody comes and beats me up on stage because you're tolerant. This is what they want. They want a citizen that will not ask questions, a citizen that will not stand up for themselves or their family, and a citizen that will do what they're told to their own detriment. And that's why I wrote that book, because everyone needs to read it and realize you don't have to do what they tell you. You can just say no. And I gotta get that through everybody's head because